Hey everyone, Drew Creekmer here, Wealth Advisor with Creekmer Wealth. Hope each and every one of you are doing well since the last time we chatted. In today's video, I want to dive into a really simple and effective framework to saving effectively and efficiently that we have helped our clients develop over the years. And if you didn't get the chance, I would encourage you to read a blog post written by our director of financial planning here at Creek and Wealth, Andy Anderson, that discusses the three primary areas where we see clients failing to prepare efficiently for their future retirement goals or future financial planning goals. And it's a great, great article and primer on those areas. And it will get you thinking about, hey, am I doing enough in these spaces? That said, after reading the article, it got me thinking about a number of recent conversations I've had with clients uh, who are just trying to make sure, hey, am I doing the right thing? Am I putting my money in the right places uh, to make sure that I'm going to be okay down the road? At the end of the day, that's what we all care about when it comes to being done at working at some point in the future, that we're going to be okay. And so what that framework is, and it's one that John has developed over now 25 years, and he's taught to us and taught to clients all around the country. And it really starts with a simple cornerstone that I'm sure you're all aware of, and that's an emergency fund. You know, a lot of financial advisors and just financial uh, experts like Dave Ramsey will tell you, hey, you need to have somewhere in the range of three to six months of living expenses in a cash savings account. And that's a great starting point. It's a good cornerstone. Uh, but that said, what we're seeing in today's current environment is that with interest rates being below a half percent with savings accounts, and they're going to stay there, uh, we have a lot of clients that are holding too much money in cash uh, that is not earning anything for you. It's not working for you. And it's losing pace with inflation. And keep in mind that inflation runs north of 2% uh, a year on average. And we're probably going to be seeing inflation creep up here in the future. I think we've all seen that when we go to the grocery store, right? And so if you have money sitting in cash, uh, not earning anything, uh, that's not money that's being very efficiently utilized for your future. Now, I think it's important that you have cash on hand uh, because life happens, right? Uh, so you need to think through your situation and say, do I have any major expenses like a car coming up or uh, you know, paying for a, a roofing expedition or update? And so what I would advise you to do, if you have more than three to four months of cash on hand, consider moving that money to a brokerage account where it can be conservatively invested, but generate dividends and interest north of 2.5% a year, uh, which will definitely be a better use of those funds. Once you have your emergency fund set in place and your next step is you're working, you have a retirement plan through your employer, you need to ensure that you're contributing enough to your retirement plan to get the employer match. So that's usually somewhere in the range of 3 to 5% of earnings. Uh, everyone needs to do this. This is free money that your employer is giving you. So make sure that you're putting three to 5% of your wages into your employer 401k or 403 or, or 457 plan. After you've done that, uh, then say, hey, you know, what money do I have on hand after I pay my normal bills? And if you have 100 bucks to $500 to $600, what you need to consider doing is contributing to an IRA or a Roth IRA until you're able to max it out. Now, the maximum contribution to an IRA or a Roth IRA, if you're under the age of 50, is $6,000 a year per individual. So if you're married and you have earned income north of $12,000, you can put $6,000 for each of you into a IRA, a Roth IRA. Once you're over the age of 50, you're able to bump that number up to $7,000 per year. Now, once you've maxed out an IRA and a Roth IRA and or a Roth IRA, uh, your next step really depends upon what your goals are. And everyone's different and everyone's experiences are different. And so this is where I would advise you that you really need to work with someone to determine what is the most efficient way from a tax standpoint and from an investing standpoint for you to save your money to achieve your goals. And here's what I mean. If you're someone that you think, hey, I'm going to work past the age of 60, um, and so I'm going to start contributing more to my retirement plan, that's totally fine. Uh, just know with retirement plans, if you retire before the age of 59 and a half and you take money out, uh, you're going to be limited from a tax and penalty standpoint with how much money you can pull out. If you're under the age of 59 and a half and you pull money out uh, of your retirement plan with a few exceptions, you're going to pay a 10% penalty on top of paying taxes. And so what I would advise you to do is to really think through your options there. 
Now, I have some clients say, I'm going to work forever, so I'm going to max out my retirement plan. And the maximum contribution is $19,500 a year if you're under the age of 50 and $26,000 a year if you're over the age of 50. So you're able to really save a good chunk of money tax efficiently. This is a great option. But I have some clients who say, hey, you know what? The investments inside of my retirement plan are average at best, and I really don't know what my future looks like. I'd like some flexibility. Well, for those clients, we talk about contributing money to a non-qualified brokerage account. And what this is, is just a normal investment account. Uh, it's either individually owned or jointly owned between two people uh, where you can invest in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and you can contribute as much money as you want to a non-qualified brokerage account. And you can take as much money as you want out of the account. And there are no age limitations on your contributions and your withdrawals. So this type of account gives you a great deal of flexibility. And so what I have a lot of people do who say, hey, you know what, I might retire before the age of 60 years old, and I'd like to be able to pull some money out of an account to live on. Well, that's a brokerage account where you're going to have that flexibility. And so I have a lot of people that say, you know what, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to increase my contribution to my retirement plan at work 1% a year. And I'm just going to keep doing that because it's 1%. It's not a ton. I won't really feel it in my pocket every month when I'm paying my bills and just living, uh, but it'll start adding up. And then with whatever excess cash flow I have, I'm going to contribute that to a brokerage account so that I am having kind of the best of both worlds. I'm increasing my tax deferral by contributing to a retirement plan, but I'm also ensuring I have future flexibility by putting money into a brokerage account. So those five steps are one, get your emergency fund in place. Two, contribute to a retirement plan up to your employer match. Three, max out an IRA or Roth IRA. And then four and five are contribute more to your retirement plan through work until you max out and or contribute to a brokerage account to ensure that you have future flexibility. You know, if you have questions about this saving structure and what's most efficient for you, contact our office. Our advisors will run the numbers for you free of charge. Or if you just have questions about the investment quality inside of your retirement plan or your other investment accounts, you know, we have a program for that. We have easy 401 for retirement plans where we are able to analyze the quality of investments that you have in your retirement plan. And then we have our investment management services in-house uh, where we have really highly credentialed individuals who can break down the pros and cons of your current investment structure. So once again, guys, thank you for your time. Take a look at Andy's article and let us know if you have any questions. We'll talk with you soon.